If anything was going to be able to wake me from my slumber, it would be the arrival of not one, not two, but three of my favorite animals in the brand new Planet Zoo Wetlands Animal Pack! That's a capybara, you guys! The largest rodent on the world, next to the beaver, who is the second largest rodent in the world. And that, my friends, isn't even a rodent. That is a platypus. I really cannot believe we are finally getting a platypus. Look at how beautiful this is! Oh my goodness! Oh my goodness, I love all of them! Look at that baby kitten! <laughs> okay, okay, the platypus is so much more beautiful than I thought it would be. This is gonna be so exciting. I'm gonna have to dive back in. They always give you just like 10 seconds of being able to ooh and awe over the animals. But my friends, the newest arrival to the Planet Zoo DLC packs has been announced today, and that is the Wetlands Animal Pack that is coming on April 12th, if I remember correctly. Kalinka Dinkley, that happens to be Chips and I's second wedding anniversary. So I'm very tickled by that. I am going to have to figure out if I'm going to be spending my time with KP Bear. Maybe I could have, oh, maybe I'll bring Chips in and I could have like a special like Chips and Siri zookeeping session as we go ahead and look at not only the new animals, nine of which are coming into this animal pack, but also the new scenario zoo that will be popping into the Brazilian wetlands, which as you guys know, I hope, is the home of this guy, the KP Capybara. Like I mentioned, the capybara is the largest rodent in the world. They are so chill. I'm pretty sure everybody has seen videos of capybara just completely relaxing with tons of other animals climbing all over them. They have big webbed feet because they are semi-aquatic mammals. They spend an immense amount of time in the water just hanging out, trying to avoid, you know, the scary predators that happen to lurk there like the uh, caiman and other things. I don't think, is it caiman? I've got to brush up on my crocodilians of the Brazilian wetlands, but basically trying to avoid anacondas and anybody else who wants to eat their adorable little faces, hanging out in big group herds with entire groups of their babies raised together in little catches where they keep all their little babies together while the adults watch them. And they head off to go and eat some of the delicious aquatic plants, just like our friend, well, the hippo more eats grass. Don't, don't look at the hippo. You think the hippo would spend time eating the like aquatic plants in the water. No friends, the hippo gets out of the water every night and eats grass like a lawnmower. So uh, look at this. Oh, I love the platypus. Happens to be one of my sister's favorite animals in the world. So it'll be really fun to share this with them. Fun fact, these platypus are in appearance, at least here, much larger than they actually are in real life. Platypus are very small. They could probably fit on your forearm. Uh, so they are not like huge. They're not like otters, of which we are also getting another otter that will be showing up along with the African water buffalo. Baby Kibi Oh, there it is! The small clawed otter will be making an appearance. Oh, look at everybody! There's going to be a lot of swimming involved, which goes along with the newest uh, 1.9 update that's actually going to be coming out the same day that the new DLC expansion is. We'll talk about the 1.9 update in just a second, because right now I want to talk more about these guys! <laughs> Oh my gosh, I am so tickled. Look at this capybara. He knows how freaking cool he is. He knows how neat he is. And the platypus, of course, being one of the most amazing marsupials that happens to exist out there. I, I'm always tickled because there's just so much going on with a platypus. More than any other creature I've really met, they do look like somebody just went wild in the spork like creature creator and was like yes of course this will be the creature of my dreams so i love platypus my sister's gonna be tickled that they are adding them in and this is the preview of the small brazilian zoo that you'll actually be able to pop into in order to explore all nine of the new animals that are going to be coming in the dlc pack and this is going to be an animal pack so i don't spy the usual things i freak out over which happens to be plants i don't see any new plants uh, to my knowledge, I saw a lot of really cool plants, but I, I recognized all of them. So I think this is going to be an entirely just animal arrival pack. Uh, oh, and look at these guys. So you can make areas where the Kipibara are able to go and frolic with you, which is really cool. Uh, I have 
have I seen Kiki Vara in person? I don't think I have. I think I would remember that. I have watched dubious numbers of hours of Kipibara videos, which is why I hesitate to go, wait, have I really seen a Kipibara? No, not in person. I'm pretty sure you guys would have heard me like screeching in excitement uh, from wherever you happen to live if I had seen a Kipibara in person. So I'm gonna have to put that on my list. Uh, but we also have the African water buffalo going along with this whole wetlands theme. And surprise, surprise, there's going to be a big update that we'll talk about in a second that will actually include some interesting additions to wetlands, including being able to make the water even more dynamically colorful and make hot springs, which I know our Japanese macaques are going to absolutely love because that happens to be something that the real life wild Japanese macaques adore, which is bathing in hot springs a trait that has apparently been part of their species for as long as people have been keeping record of the macaques, which is a very long time. But that said, let's look at all of the nine animals that will be coming into the new DLC Wetlands Animal Pack. <clears throat> Where there is water, there's life. Discover the richness of the wetlands in the Planet Zoo Wetlands Animal Pack and embrace eight diverse new species. What? I thought it said nine. I was convinced it said nine. All right, fine. Maybe it was tweaked to nine, or maybe I just can't count. Don't mind me. I got excited. KP Bear count for two, okay? These highly requested animals comprise of seven habitat species and one exhibit amphibian and include the adorable capybara, distinctive platypus, and powerful water buffalo, as well as eight amazing additions that make up this animal-focused pack. Hmm, no wonder I got kind of confused. The Wetlands Animal Pack also features all new challenge scenario. Head to the Brazilian Penital... Pen Pantanal, there we go, a natural region encompassing the world's largest flooded grassland, and lend your zoo management expertise to an inspiring animal sanctuary. Are you up for the task? So there's eight fascinating animals. Please welcome eight incredible species to your zoo. The Wetlands Animal Pack contains many of the community's most requested animals in the Capybara and the Platypus. Those two are definitely two that were high up on my list, and one of the ones I haven't mentioned yet is my third favorite animal, and we'll be talking about that in a second here. <clears throat> The Asian small clawed otter, speckled caiman, Nile lichwi, which if you guys are wondering what the heck a lichwi is, here, I'll show you guys. All right, because I was like, wait, what's a lichwi again? I, I had heard of the name, but I was perplexed. It's these guys. See these guys that look like antelope? A lichwi is a wetlands antelope that is from uh, Sumar? Around the Nile. So basically that guy you saw running by, this is the buffalo, uh, but that's what a lichwi is. And you can definitely look up some cool pictures about them. They have these long flowing like beards that go down their front on both males and females that are quite lovely actually. Wild water buffalo. And then this is where I absolutely lost it guys and was like, are you kidding? Three of my favorite animals, the red crowned crane. Do you know who the red crowned crane is? It's my boy Cranston. That's who the red crowned crane is. Cranston from our Animal Crossing series. The red crowned crane, which is an endangered species of crane and exceptionally fascinating to learn about. They live in Japan and some small parts of China. It, it kind of touch and go on their populations there, but they are a protected species in Japan and you will see them in so many of the motifs in art. You'll see them uh, in historical art, in modern art. You guys have seen some sort of symbolization of the red crowned crane and they have a elaborate courtship dances that they do with one another in the end of winter, early spring, as they get ready to go ahead and lay their eggs. They just have such a fascinating history. And interestingly enough, they are one of the many species of the world that were almost completely extinct, except for a small population that was just kind of hanging out where a bunch of farmers were that people just didn't hunt. And a lot of the red crown cranes that exist today actually came from that little protected pocket of just a few dozen that ended up being being um, covered by one of the first like laws to protect a species in the modern era in Japan. They were informally protected under like different leaders for a long time, but it was one of the first laws to protect a specific species. And now we have a bunch of red crown cranes we can watch, but they're still considered to be kind of teetering almost on the edge of extinction. Not quite, but you don't want to like 
You don't want your, your small populations that are kind of isolated like that to be exposed to too many dangers. Anyway, I loved red crown canes a lot. They are indeed the species that my boy Cranston is actually based on. And they are not even the last species in the wetland pack. I feel like I have done no favors to the Dambu Crested Newt by leaving the poor little exhibit animal tacked onto the end after, you know, I mean, how are you supposed to follow that up? If this was some sort of, of competition, I feel like the poor Newt would be like, why are you putting me after the platypus and the capybara? <laughs> like, that's not fair. The poor Newt. I feel like they should put the exhibit animal first so that then, like, he's not holding up the rear like, oh... Yay, I get to go after all of the like gold star big guys, thanks. Hang in there, little damn boo crested newt. I'm sure you're extremely awesome and we will definitely be adding some into our exhibits in the future. Anyway, bring these fan favorite animals into your existing zoos or build entirely new ones. Create stunning habitats specifically designed to reflect their natural surroundings and invite your guests on an exciting journey of discovery as they learn more about these eight wetland wonders. There's also all new animal animations. You'll love watching your animals make themselves at home. De-stress along the capybara as they luxuriate with the new hot water tap enrichment item. And I think that's actually coming in the update because, or something like it, because you are going to be able to make bubbling hot springs for all of your animals to enjoy in the upcoming update. Catch a rare glimpse of the platypus on a deep water dive. Marvel at the aquatic peri- oh my gosh, periettes of the graceful Asian small clawed otter. And watch the red crowned cranes mating dance! No way, I missed that when I was reading it! Oh my gosh! We're gonna have the red crowned cranes mating dance! Ah! I'm so excited! I'm just gonna set up like a bird watching spot and we're basically going to live there. Especially with the new first person mode that is also coming to Planet Zoo. <clears throat> Every species in the, uh, in the pack has its own unique relationship with the marshy waters of their homeland, each an essential part to the local ecosystem, and a thrilling new scenario. Head to the rich and vibrant Brazilian Pantanal and test your zoo running skills in the world's largest wetland. Here you'll find an animal sanctuary aiming to rescue struggling species. Lend the enterprise a helping hand by taking over management duties. Adopt and care for new arrivals as you nurture them through their entire life cycle and help them thrive. In order to run a successful modern zoo, you also need to delight and entertain your visitors, educate them on animal welfare, and fulfill their expectations. Do you have what it takes to give your animals a forever home? Okay, I definitely do. I'm intrigued. They better give me a gosh darn statue of the capybara this time. I still feel gypped out of my beaver statue. <sighs> and you guys can see some of our latest adventures in Planet Zoo to find out what I'm, I'm muttering about, but I wish I had a beaver statue. Why would you give me a seal statue, honestly? Anyway, that release of the DLC coming out on April 12th, which will cost money. Usually it's 10 bucks uh, USD for anybody who would like to go ahead and potentially snag it when it releases, is going to be releasing alongside the free 1.9 update that includes a couple key things that got me very excited, like roaming educators, which is the job that I actually used to do at a cave exhibit teaching children about cave sciences, roaming around, making sure that nobody started like chucking my microscopes across the room or releasing the hissing cockroaches from their pen, which would be a little bit of a headache. They were very harmless cockroaches, but if you, you if one of them gets loose and I had a whole classroom full of third graders, it was just chaos. I'm just going to leave that statement there. But moving on, that's right, free roaming educators will be roaming their way in your zoo. This is a brand new way for your educators to share their animal knowledge with your guests as they walk around, bringing some extra educational activity along with them. Whenever an educator isn't traveling, resting, or at an animal talk point, they will wander and give mini talks to your guests to help educate them on some of the animals present in your zoo. I love that. I've always thought the educator was kind of a little bit of a stiff staff member to add in because they would just show up for one month at one talking point and they would just give their speech and then they would just kind of like walk around for a year until it was time to go to another talking point and give a speech. And all of the animal educators that I have ever met at good AZA accredited zoos or other facilities don't stop 
talking. No, they get up on the stage, they're talking. They get off the stage, they're talking. They're on their way to the bathroom, they're talking. Like the, the, the best animal educators I have ever met do not stop talking about animals because they love them. They are the best animal nerds you could ever find. So I'm really excited to see that the educators are now going to kind of reflect what I have seen over and over and over and over again in all the places I've ever been to in real life, where if you're really passionate about something, you guys can, if, if you met me at a real zoo, you're not going to be able to get me to stop talking. Like Chips leads mini tours when we go to museums and he starts talking about history stuff. I do the same at zoos. I'll just start talking very loudly to my husband like, boy, did you know about giraffes? and their spines? Do you know why their tongue is blue? By the way, do you know that that's like a, a Galapagos tortoise and it lives this long and they're descended from a bunch of tortoises that got washed out to sea and just floated their way onto like Galapagos Islands? You, if you ever were at a zoo at the same time I am, you're gonna know it because I don't stop talking. So I'm really excited to see that the roaming educators are going to be like that as well. I'm also super excited about a couple new things that are going to be added in, like the explore camera mode. So now you're actually going to be able to use a new camera mode called explore camera mode, where it actually gets you down on the guest level point of view. And what shocked me about that, cause I was like, okay, okay. I can kind of get on guest level already. You don't have to click on a guest. You don't have to click on a staff member. You don't have to like manually put the camera there and then try to like float your way around. You can be at guest level just with like the click of a button, I assume, and you can edit from there. That blew my mind. I think that my builds are going to become infinitely better because I will be able to actually see what my guest would see instead of just having to like hover like a very nervous, like floating deity in the skies going like, I think I didn't, I think that boulder isn't floating in midair, but I don't know. Now I will actually be able to see from the guest point of view. And I have a feeling that my zoo is going to look so much better because of that. So I'm very excited about that. There's also going to be some changes to the visual management screen and the webcams on billboards that include the ability to go ahead and show webcam feeds from burrows. Boom! I have been requesting that since we got the idea of webcam feeds. So I'm very excited about that. Uh, and also speaking of burrows, there will now be a small burrow so that meerkats and prairie dogs will be able to have small burrows they can go into that you can actually see inside, including with the webcam that you can sync to something so that people can see what the little prairie dogs or meerkats are doing in their dens, which I love. And then finally, the thing I'm most excited about other than, you know, the roaming, the roaming educators is that we're going to be having the bathing option where you can now go ahead and you can create a little misty or bubble effect on the water so you can have a little hot spring, which I'm pretty excited about. I love the mist idea. There's gonna be a misty fog that will float above the water. That's going to be amazing. I'm very excited about that. Uh, and I think that it's really going to help just set the scene for this wetland area. But I also love the bubble effect because I would love to make a shallow pool of water that you can actually heat, keeping it to the animal's re requirements, of course. And it will end up creating little hot springs that will reduce animal stress. So I'm intrigued to see how many animals would enjoy that because I would love to give my gorillas a hot spring if they want it. I know Kipibara love hot spring, Japanese macaque love hot springs, but I don't know about the other animals. Do pandas like hot springs? I could probably find a video of a panda in a hot spring, but we'll see. So those are my favorite things. I'm tickled to pieces. Like I said, if anything was gonna like plop me right back out of, of the little like den of, of where is Siri that I have gotten myself into in the last few weeks, it would be the glorious Kibibara, the largest rodent in the world, because I just couldn't ask for anything more fantastic. Uh, but I did get something even more fantastic because now we also have platypus and the red crown crane mating dance. Ah, I am excited. But all right guys, April 12th, we've got some fun things. That's not even like it's a little over two weeks away, good grief. We've got a lot of fun things coming up and I'm very excited because every single time a new bit of Planet Zoo DLC comes out, I always am a little bit taken with the fact that our world is beautiful and I'm so happy to share it with all of you. 
So if you guys are excited, let me know about what down in the comments below. And if you would like to join me on this and literally thousands and thousands more adventures, both done and on the way to come, do please consider subscribing. But most importantly, my friends, stay curious. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.